Hey everyone, I thought I would do a, a video, a vlog of sorts. Um, I haven't done one in a while, and not on my health, just because, um, you know, there haven't really been many, many updates, to be honest. Um, I'm still kind of dealing with a lot, um, you know, with my health, but also otherwise just overall in life. Um, but I do feel as of late that I'm making progress with my health. Um, you know, I think, you know, lately, especially in the past several months and I think the upcoming months will be really, um, I guess I want to say transformational. I think, um, you know, I've found out a fair amount about with my health, you know, just with, um, uh, one thing is that I found out that I'm actually, um, technically iron deficient or low ferritin. Uh, if I, if I went to a doctor, a hematologist, he, they likely wouldn't agree to that. They would, uh, just probably dismiss it, but that's kind of often the case I've found with, um, conventional, I guess, allopathic care. Um, so that is one thing I'm treating. Um, I'm still mostly seeing naturopaths. I haven't really, um, you know, been doing much else. I've, I still have TMJ issues. I, I'm likely going to get Invisalign and I may get, um, I may see a specialist as well too. I'm trying to see, I don't know if they get covered by my insurance or not. Um, so one thing that I've been doing the past several months is I've been on and off antibiotics, but also antifungals. I've been on like two or three different antibiotics off and on. Um, and at antifungals, um, I was seeing a, do a naturopath that is more um, she does a lot of, specializes in a lot of things, but one of them is mold, but also kind of gut issues and other stuff, you know. Every naturopath and, and doctors are different, and they have different specialties. Um, she did do LENS, uh, which is a low-energy neurofeedback system, which is kind of like neurofeedback, which I can tell I, I definitely need because I, I feel like i um, definitely on edge a lot of times, and my sympathetic nervous system is more engaged than my parasympathetic and that's what you really need to engage a lot when you're healing. It's really important that that's more engaged than, than um, the sympathetic. So anyways, um, at first I, I did get some testing. I found out that I actually had, um, I think, a foodborne illness. And I think it was even reported to the county. I think I got contact about it. Um, it was kind of like an underlying gut infection. And the antibiotics... It seems to have taken care of that because I had a stool test before and then after, and it seems to have wiped it out. I did a more comprehensive one um, as well, and I found that I actually had a, a little bit of overgrowth of candida, but also um, enterobacter, I believe, as well, too. And when you have gut issues, you don't absorb nutrients, and especially iron, and that can cause low iron and low ferritin. And so to... Uh, so that is why I've been treating the gut issues, but I've also been taking iron and I've also been doing iron injections because Unfortunately, my iron would have to be low and my hemoglobin would have to be low My ferritin would have to be low for me to qualify and for my insurance to cover it and so being the kind of using my you know own resourcefulness and research and stuff like that and I, I have done quite a bit of research. I think one night in particular I read a bunch of stuff I found out about the iron protocol, which is interesting, um, and a Facebook group, and I think it's on Reddit, and then they also have a book and website, and found out quite a bit, you know, I, um, there's a lot to it, there's, you know, there's heme iron, there's non-heme iron, heme iron is typically, um, more well tolerated, and it's annual based, but it's hard to find, there's only, like, the one I get is, like, probably the best quality but also best price and there's only maybe a few other ones um non-heme is technically more than more um non-animal based plant-based ones although animal based sources they do have non-heme and heme but they come with side effects um typically um i was taking a fair amount i, I think i kind of rushed it because sometimes you know you have to um, you never know like how your body will tolerate it and I did have um, Have some nausea and I think I threw up once 
as well too but luckily that only happened really about once and my body is sort of adjust to it because I do I am taking heme iron non heme iron I'm taking some other cofactors and co-nutrients and stuff like that like magnesium electrolytes like pota potassium uh, b12 as well um, b12 and folate uh, copper as well too um, and so I've been also doing injections because that also bypasses the gut and I think that can help boost it um, and so to kind of break it down I think I kind of went off on tangent you know um, from my understanding is there's different levels or stages of kind of iron deficiency and when it gets to a point where you're anemic where your hemoglobin is low and your iron that's like the extreme end and stuff like that but you can still have a lot of issues and symptoms even if your ferritin is low and my in my iron a complete iron panel when I get like all this stuff like that my ferritin was like at an 18 or 19 for a while I was able to bump it up last time I got tested to 40 it should ideally at least be 100 and maybe even higher and it needs to stay there at least for a while for a lot of the symptoms and other stuff to improve um, the TMJ is also an issue I don't know if the low ferritin iron is um, causing or contributing to that or the TMJ is contributing to a low iron because I've kind of read and heard both because I know um, TMJ causes substance P which is kind of this unique form of inflammation and I've done some research on that there's one I think dentist or alternative dentist um, in particular that I think has been on Dave Asprey but also I found out from detox dudes Josh Mason is that it can cause and contribute a bunch of other stuff too so I'm trying to correct that and so I, I may go see a specialist but I also may get Invisalign and see how that helps um, but taking iron is kind of a pain and also these antibiotics and other stuff because now that I'm done I have to basically repair my gut and then probably get tested eventually probably in a month or two and see how that is uh, my naturopath also suggested that my DHEA be maybe low which could be due to adrenal fatigue which could likely be an issue because um, you know with poor sleep um, and kind of feeling on edge and stuff like that and it's fairly common as well too um, so I'm trying to do a bunch of di bunch of stuff and also um, uh, what else um, yeah I mean that's kinda of what I'm doing I'm still doing a lot of other stuff like detox and stuff like that um, on about a few times a week at least with infrared sauna and binders and you know doing other stuff working with some plant medicine as well too and trying to walk and stuff, trying to exercise but I hope that as my ferritin improves all my symptoms will improve and I'll be able to lose weight um, because it's been difficult for me to lose weight um, I've lost weight in the past I've gained weight in the past I've it's a lot easier for me and I think pretty much everyone to gain weight than it is to lose weight um, Anyways, I think my dog is barking, but um, <laughs> one of my dogs. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, that's what I've been dealing with um, a lot. And taking iron and stuff is also, it, it's very taxing. I, I, I did an injection earlier and it is, I, I feel very tired. <laughs> um, but I hope that as my gut issues improve, I can also absorb it via the supplements better I'm taking as well too. And that all my symptoms improve and other stuff. But I still think it will probably be a few months if not several months before my body kind of maintains or retains some kind of normalcy and comes back to normal um, I still have to kind of see how things play out um, I, I have been I have tested you know I was able to finally get tested for Lyme and co-infections and stuff like that it doesn't seem like that is the case um, Epstein-Barr I, I still have a kind of a past infection but it's kind of a low grade one um, and I don't think it's a major it might be a minor cause of kind of my issues um, you know um, mentally it's still kind of affecting me but I'm kind of hesitant to aside from using psilocybin which is typically on a microdose level um, and using stuff like hop ants and ongo which I haven't really gone into but I might in in the future um, there isn't really much that I can do or that seems to help you know I do take lion's mane a few other things that I'm trying to do, kind of do to help that but um, I may in the future um, 
try counseling again and medication, but the only reason is because in order for me to try esketamine, which is low-dose ketamine, which I think would help not only with the mental health, but also with pain and inflammation as well too, but also uh, TMS is I'd have to be on medication and, and um, counseling at least for a little bit. And I'll, I have to transfer over my records also to my um, to this one place that I'm going to, which uh, I'm surprised, especially on my current insurance and, and Medicaid, that they will allow that. Um, and also, on top of that, I'm you know dealing a lot else with my life, I'm doing e-commerce, um, trying to be more active on this on a podcast, um, doing market research studies, which is something I've been doing a few months, which has been making some money. I'm still doing some crypto investments, although. There's been a lot of changes, especially with yield nodes. That's a whole nother topic as well, too. Um, but yeah, I hope that, you know, it seems like things are improving. It still may take some time. Um, lately, I've just been really tired, even more so than usual <laughs> at times. But I, I think I'm making progress, especially with my workouts, because I've been tracking them for quite some time. And I do make some improvement, but it's kind of small improvements. It's not as well. Oh, and the other thing is I still have kind of low testosterone, but I think that's tied or more linked to the low iron as well, too, is that my body's not absorbing it because I am using exogenous injectable testosterone. And luckily, the naturopath that I'm currently seeing, not only does he do lens, which is good for you know mental health and my parasympathetic, but you also specialize in testosterone and raising testosterone as well too. So I bumped that up recently. I'm hoping that that maybe helps as well too. Um, and that if I can get that up, then my body can start. And then maybe um, I'm hoping that I can get better workouts. I can maybe even start training martial arts again, which I haven't really been able to do consistently. I've been, you know, doing Tai Chi and stuff like that. Maybe some scream or Filipino martial arts on my own. But it seems like everything's moving in a good direction. Um, but it will still probably take some time. Um, when I first started injecting, injecting, um, I kind of have it down now. I've only been doing it about every other day, so about three days a week actually. Um, I don't want to be too aggressive, especially with iron, because it it um, it puts a lot of stress on not only the liver but also the spleen, and I can sometimes actually feel it. And because I've had off and on sp spleen pain, but this is kind of before I even did iron at all. I think that's because my body's just basically overworked and um, trying to compensate for the low iron. That's the other thing is that one thing that has always been shown up on my blood tests is the complete blood count, um, especially my red blood cells. There have been some small abnormalities, which is basically my body trying to comp compensate for the low iron and adjust to that. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, I kind of we'll do updates. I want to do kind of something on maybe iron and some other things and maybe also maybe do a podcast episode on it because I've learned quite a bit and I think it's maybe more common than a lot of people think. It's more common in women and people that have had, you know, blood loss either due to, it can be something from having surgery, having, um, blood loss from injuries, um, if you're a woman and menstruating, um, sometimes during pregnancy, people lose a lot of blood. Um, but there can be a lot of other factors. There can be, if you have gut issues that can cause and contribute it to it, um, so much else that can contribute to it. Um, but I, I do feel that I'm making some progress and it seems like for once in a long time, um, the last time I was kind of making progress was ozone therapy. And I think that was, likely helping because it was giving providing my oxygen or body with more oxygen which is when you have low iron or ferritin that's basically one of the major things that it carries and transports all your cells is oxygen so yeah um that's about it that's um updates um i haven't done one of these i think in months maybe years um but yeah, I'll see how it goes. I'll see how everything goes. Um, hope everyone is well. If anyone has questions or want to feel free to uh, reach out, you know, I am. Some people have reached out and stuff like that for, I am trying to do some health coaching and I'm trying to promote, you know, my book as well as too. I feel I may, 
split it up into smaller kind of more niche books or topics uh, eventually uh, because it's kind of broad and it kind of covers a lot of different things but I'll see how I do um, because typically for writing and even affiliate marketing I haven't really made much in the past but yeah um, that's it